Today, we're taking a look at Britain's most evil mom, Eunice Spry. A mom is supposed to be loving, supportive, warm, and kind. Eunice Spry is none of those things. Eunice Spry, a British woman from Tewkesbury in Gloucestershire, UK, ran a foster home for children out of her home. And she welcomed kids into her home, promising them a safe space to grow up. However, these kids were anything but safe under Eunice's care. And to the outside world, Eunice presented herself as a pillar of the community. I mean, running a foster care program, you usually associate that with being a good person. But for this story, that is certainly not the case. Eunice Spry was just straight up evil, the worst possible person to care for a child. Eunice was officially approved as a foster carer in 1984. She had a biological daughter named Judith Spry and an adopted daughter named Charlotte Spry living at home with her. Eventually, more kids were added into the home. Victoria Evans, Aloma Gilbert, and Christopher Spry were toddlers in need of a home, which Eunice gladly provided. Unfortunately, once Eunice had these young children in her home, she started to abuse them right away. She would beat them with sticks, force them to eat pet food, stand in time out in the corner for hours and scrub their skin with sandpaper. Myself and Victoria were locked in a room and fed only once every seven to eight days. We were in real trouble, given water every two days. Uh, we were basically naked in a room and we had rat droppings and all sorts in that room to try and stay alive. It was, it was horrific. The kids were often battered and attacked with hot pokers, machetes, and cricket bats, and had their heads held under water. And the abuse just keeps getting worse. When the kids would cry, as punishment, she would shove sticks down their throats, making it really painful for them to swallow for days and days. You know, she'd step on our throat, because remember, we're led down, she'd beat in the top of our feet, she would step on our throats. She... To her, us screaming while being beaten was disrespecting her. At school, the teachers kind of suspected something was wrong, and they would ask the kids, you know, what's wrong? But the kids were instructed to tell them everything was completely fine and everything at home was great. Eunice was obsessed with being perfect and appearing perfect to the outside world, so she made sure that none of these kids would raise any flags or say a word about the abuse to anyone. After a while, Eunice decided to move the whole family to a little farm near the village of Eckington. Here, she had even more privacy to do whatever horrible things she wanted to these kids. We got beaten once we got to the farmhouse. We'd get beaten daily. And it was mostly with bamboo poles, with chair legs, with pieces of metal sometimes. But the one day Eunice was using a offcut of wood from where we were restoring the farmhouse. There were offcuts everywhere. And it had a nail in it and I don't think she knew it had a nail in it but she whipped it across the front of my leg and the nail pierced my kneecap and went into my kneecap and got stuck. This farm in Eckington was in terrible condition. The place was in shambles and really not a good place for children to be running around. Basic amenities were either not connected or they were selectively put in places where only the children spry favored would have access to them. Once they moved to the farm, the kids stopped attending school. Instead, they would spend all day at home with Eunice. Eunice was starving these foster children. She was not giving them access to running water and not giving them access to electricity, so they couldn't get clean and couldn't stay warm. Just basic human necessities. If the kids did actually manage to find scrap food to eat and they got caught, they would be punished. For example, one of the kids, Christopher, at age 10, was punished by having his feet tied to the back of Eunice's van and then dragged behind it while Eunice drove all around the field by their home. The crazy thing is Eunice didn't abuse all of the kids. She didn't touch her own children. Her biological daughter, Judith, and her adopted daughter, Charlotte, were left completely fine. She didn't do any harm to them at all. Actually, it's said that they were treated quite well by Eunice, but it seems that Eunice only tortured and abused the foster kids. In her eyes, she saw them as children of the devil. She felt that the foster kids deserved everything she gave them, 
And although Judith and Charlotte did not personally receive any physical abuse, they did, however, play a role in the other children's abuse. Eunice would force Judith and Charlotte to make violent acts against the other children. She would shout out instructions and tell them exactly what to do. For example, Eunice would force the kids to lay down. She would have Judith and Charlotte stand on their foster siblings' windpipes to stop them from screaming while they whipped the bottom of their feet with sticks. I mean, this is just really awful, appalling things. So really, Judith and Charlotte might not have received physical abuse, but this is definitely a form of psychological abuse. Then one day, Judith, Charlotte, and Victoria Evans were in a horrible accident. They were all together traveling in a car when another vehicle crashed into them. The driver that crashed into them apparently was not paying attention to the road, but was changing the radio station at the time of the crash. Unfortunately, 16-year-old Charlotte and 27-year-old Judith passed away pretty much immediately from this accident. And she just very blankly looked at us and said, Judith and Charlotte are dead. And of course, we are instant tears, you know. These are our siblings, whether you know, we like them, you know, they were untouched and stuff, but they're still our siblings. And, and she just looked at her and said, and I wish it had been you. I went through emotions of wanting to commit suicide at age 12. I can't forgive her for that. I really can't forgive her for that. Now, Victoria managed to survive, but was badly injured. She had broken her neck and pelvis and had multiple fractures to her arms and legs. She was taken to the hospital and spent several months in the intensive care unit. At the hospital, Victoria was induced into a coma for months. While Victoria was in the hospital, Eunice would go and visit her. When Victoria eventually woke up, Eunice told her that the crash was all Victoria's fault. At the hospital, Eunice would threaten Victoria and tell her not to speak a word about the abuse going on back home. Eunice told Victoria that she had survived the crash, unlike Judith and Charlotte, because Victoria was a child of the devil and that the devil looks after his own. Eunice even denied Victoria physiotherapy, which she desperately needed. Without this treatment, the doctor said that Victoria would need to be in a wheelchair for a few months while she built up her strength. But Eunice forced Victoria to stay in the wheelchair well after three months. If Victoria tried to get out of the wheelchair, Eunice would then beat her. Plus, this was an opportunity for Eunice. You see, the longer Victoria remained in that wheelchair, the longer Eunice could collect benefit money for her. So having Victoria in a wheelchair put money in Eunice's pocket. Victoria was in that wheelchair for three years. It just makes me sick to think about what these kids went through and they were forced to keep quiet about it for so long. There are so many child abuse cases that go unreported all around the world and it's just really heartbreaking. I found a study by the NSPCC that spoke with almost 4,000 children and indicates 7% of secondary school age children report being abused at home, including being hit, kicked, beaten, or attacked with a weapon by an adult. And over half of these adults were the child's own parents. I mean, think about that for a second. That's a really high percentage. And maybe some of these kids are too afraid to speak up and tell the truth, so the real percentage could even be higher. In 2005, Victoria finally spoke out about the time she had spent with Eunice and what really went on behind those closed doors. She confided in a close friend and revealed all of the horror stories she'd experienced. Her friend then persuaded her to take the matter to police. Other foster children that had been in Eunice's care, Christopher and Aloma, had also agreed to testify against Eunice in court. Finally, in April of 2007, Eunice, at 62 years old, was sentenced to 14 years in prison for unlawful wounding, cruelty to a person under 16, assault occasioning actual bodily harm, perverting the course of justice, and witness intimidation. The offenses took place in two of Spry's home in Gloucestershire between 1986 and all the way up until 2005. Eunice had racked up 26 charges of child abuse, and that's only sentenced to 14 years? I mean, that's nowhere near enough time. This woman was horrible and deserves a much harsher sentence than that. And if that's not bad enough, throughout the entire trial, Eunice played totally innocent. Yeah, that's right. She claimed she was on the up and up and simply raising the kids in line with Christian values. She claimed that the only physical punishment that she ever used was a smack on the bottom. 
At the trial, the judge for this case, Judge Simon Darwell Smith, told Eunice that this was the worst case in his 40 years practicing law. Judge Darwell Smith also said, it's difficult for anyone to understand how any human being could have even contemplated what you did, let alone with the regularity and premeditation you employed. The judge also told Eunice at the trial, I could not fail to notice that during the five and a half weeks of this trial, you showed no emotion even when the jury returned the guilty verdicts. In September 2008, Spry's sentence was reduced by the High Court to 12 years. She was released from prison in 2014, which means she only served seven years and two months of her sentence. After all of that, after 17 years of torture, these foster kids were finally free from Eunice's wicked grasp. Silenced for far too long, the children under Eunice's care, now as adults, decided to share their stories with the world. Eunice's oldest foster son, Christopher Spry, nicknamed Child C, published a book of the same name about his childhood living with Eunice Spry. The book's titled Child C, Surviving a Foster Mother's Reign of Terror. Eunice's foster daughter, Aloma Gilbert, also wrote and shared a book about what she'd endured. She published Deliver Me From Evil. Eunice's foster child, Victoria, also went on to write a book about her tragic experience living with Eunice. The book is titled Tortured. The book was very successful, so successful that it was translated into three different languages to be shared with more people. Victoria said that this book is the side of the story I always wanted to tell. Victoria later went on to work with social workers to help them spot the signs of abuse. She wanted to do something positive to help and protect children. But it pains me to say that Victoria ultimately ended her life early in her flat in Cheltenham on September 22nd, 2020. Just two weeks before her death, she was discharged from a psychiatric hospital after six months of treatment. Christopher, Victoria's brother, said Victoria wanted to be remembered for her mission to help children. He's quoted as saying, the work she was doing with Gloucestershire Safeguarding Board and Social Services was because she wanted ours to be the last horror case for Gloucestershire. I think her legacy will be the work she was doing to help the next wave of our social workers spot cases like ours early on. Childhood abuse and neglect cases are serious public health problems, and adverse childhood experiences can have long-term impacts on health, opportunity, and well-being. It's absolutely horrible what those kids went through living with Eunice. No child should ever feel unsafe in their home. It absolutely just breaks my heart. And it's difficult to tell you this story as I'm sure it's difficult to hear as well. So hug your loved ones extra tight tonight and please stay safe out there. I'm Jason and thanks for watching another dark episode of Killer Bites. I'll see you next time.